Hey everybody, Ron Bielefeld, Whistling Wings Photography. Welcome to another video. I've got my R3, which I've been shooting now since it first came out. Isn't a very long time, but I think I've got it set up for my bird and bird and flight photography to where I really like it. So if you want to see how I have my R3 set up, stay tuned. So here we are in the Canon R3's menu system. We're going to take kind of a deep dive into the system here to see what my setups look like for birds in general and birds in flight. So we are on the first shoot menu and we have image quality up top. Go up to there and we'll dive into here. And this is just for JPEGs and high files. And since I'm shooting strictly raw, these really don't come into play. If we go down to the image type and size, we've got where we can choose whether we're going to shoot raw only or raw and JPEG. See, I have it set to RAW, and I have the JPEG setting to the hyphen, which is none. Now on my R5, sometimes I'll shoot CRAW because it benefits the buffer situation. On the Canon R3, since we're shooting 24 megapixels and not 45 like on the R5, the 24 megapixels, the buffer lasts a lot longer, even shooting 30 frames per second. And I want all the quality on my 24 megapixel images, so it's set to raw. The crop and aspect ratio set to full. We don't want any cropping going on in camera. Number two, shoot menu. Not a whole lot going on here. We can see that everything is pretty much turned off. And I didn't change anything with exposure compensation or anything like that. ISO speed settings are left to default. No need to belabor any of these menus longer than we have to. Moving on to shoot three menu. Anti-flicker, of course flicker is off. We're doing birds, birds in flight, unless you're shooting them in a gym or an auditorium or something somewhere. <clears throat> Don't have to worry about flicker. No speed light control to worry about here. Metering mode I have set to spot. Now you can dive in here and you can see the different metering modes. But I use spot for a different reason. I, I shoot full manual, but I have it set to spot metering. So in full manual, meter doesn't do anything. It's working, but it doesn't change any of your exposure parameters. But I like spot metering because it puts the circle we can get out of here just for a second. It puts that circle, see that gray circle in the middle? In the middle of your frame, that's where the spot metering takes place. But for me, it's a reference to the center of the frame when I'm shooting tracking modes for autofocus. It helps me maintain my orientation to where the center of the frame is. So that's why I keep it in spot metering. So we can move on to... Number four, white balance, I set to a Calvin value. For Canon, I like it between 6100 and 6400 for outdoors. We can go down to set custom white balance. We're not doing anything there, not doing anything there. Color space, Adobe RGB rather than sRGB. I have my picture style set to neutral. Doesn't affect your pictures coming out of the camera if you're shooting raw, but it does affect how they look on uh, in the viewfinder and on the LCD screen in the back of the camera if you preview them. And some post-processing software packages can use this information, the picture style information, when you bring in your raw images, and it can kind of add that processing or lack thereof to your images 
So be careful about how you have your post-processing software set up, whether it's going to use the sidecar data, the, the uh, metadata from the camera when it comes to picture style. If we go on to number five, long exposure noise reduction is turned off. High ISO speed noise reduction. I'd like to leave it basically on the default setting here. Canon's newest cameras are doing a really good job dealing with high ISO, high ISO speed noise reduction. High ISO speed noise reduction. Let's get that right. Uh, it don't see a lot of feather detail being taken out or anything like that. So I've been leaving it at the default and I'm not unhappy with it. Till I see something I don't like, then I'll uh, maybe turn it off. Go on to number six, nothing there that we need to worry about. Number seven, right now I have the drive mode set to high plus. Now this takes into account both the electronic shutter in the R3 and also the mechanical shutter in the R3, whereas on the R5, the drive mode didn't really make any difference if you were in electronic shutter, because you got 20 frames per second, other than if you went to one shot, one frame per second. But now the drive mode matters for both electronic shutter, being 30 frames per second, you can drop down to H, which would be uh, 15 frames per second on electronic shutter, and then you can drop it down to low, which would be three frames per second electronic shutter. Drive mode for mechanical shutter is 12, six, and three, respectively, for H plus, H, and slow, the lower, the lower speed that you can select. So not really something you set here in the menus. When I'm shooting, I'll set it using the Q button, and we'll talk about that later on. Interval timer disabled, bulb timer disabled, silent function is off, and shutter mode here is set to electronic, but again we change that as we shoot, and shutter release without a card is turned off. I don't like having the camera being able to shoot without a card in there, because then I might shoot without a card in there when I'm out in the field, and that's a bad thing. So, number eight. Custom quick controls. This is nice. On the R5, you couldn't customize the quick control menu. When you hit the Q button on the back in the R3, you can. You can edit your layout. You go in there, uh, see how I've, this is your quick controls. Anything with a check mark is what I have show up when I press the Q button. Anything without a check mark won't go through here real quick and you can see the different things that you can put in there not everything not everything but enough good things so whoop, go back to the menu you can reset the settings you can clear all the items and you can customize your quick control so there's a lot of different things there you can get out of here and I can show you I'll hit the Q button Here's what my quick control looks like. I've got autofocus, I've got the drive speed, I've got metering, I've got, oop, and of course it's gonna time out on me. I've got the eye controlled autofocus on and off. I've got the type of uh, subject to detect. It's all in here like that, and that's all I have in there. Go back to the menu, touch shutter is disabled. Image review, go on to number nine, exposure simulation for display simulation because I want to see my exposure. It's one of the great things about mirrorless cameras. You can see an exposure simulation, which is great. That's up here at the top. And if we move down, shooting info display, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this stuff. There's a lot of different ways you can display information on your screens and on your viewfinders. This is personal preference. It doesn't really affect anything when it comes to shooting, so I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time on that stuff here. Histogram display, which is nice mirrorless cameras again. You can display histogram in your viewfinder if you'd like. It's set to brightness for me, and it's set to, and you can change the size of it, and in here you can change the display size from either small or large. I keep it on small because I don't like a big, huge uh, histogram block 
taking up a bunch of my viewfinder, especially if I'm shooting birds in flight. I like to keep it, I like to keep my viewfinder very clean, not cluttered up with a bunch of information that I don't need when I don't want it. Lens info display. Focal distance display in manual focus. Focal length display. These two things. This focal length display is really cool. Didn't have that before, so when you shot a zoom lens, what exact focal length are you set to? I don't know. I'm just guessing between 1 and 500. I know when I'm at 100. Didn't know when, and I knew when I was at 500, but in between? Don't know exactly. So now, with that set, we can get out of here. And if we zoom the camera, for some reason it's not going to show that information. Let's bring it up. There we go. So now you can see the information, and you can see when I zoom, that millimeter scale over there is going up. And that is really cool. And I like that. That's a new addition, and I like it. Okay, let's go back to the menu. Viewfinder, display format, and all that kind of stuff, again, isn't really uh, relevant to shooting birds or birds in flight. It's a personal thing. Display performance, however should be set on smooth. Smooth is important. It changes the refresh rate of the viewfinder, makes it look much more congruous as you're shooting. And that is important, especially when you're shooting birds in flight. All right, moving on to the autofocus menu. The autofocus on this camera, like the R5, but even more, it has so much that you can do with this autofocus now. Eye control, tracking subjects on or off, you can track subjects in the zones now. It, it, there, there's so much here. This is going to be a video all by itself. So I'm not going to go into a ton of details other than what applies to birds and birds in flight specifically and how I have my camera set up and why. But there is so much to do here. If you can't get the autofocus set up the way you want it for you shooting with on the R3, whew, you're going to have a hard time finding any camera that can do it because this thing has a ton of stuff that you can do, even over what the R5 can do. All right, so for birds in flight, if we come down here, uh, autofocus operation, servo, of course. Subject tracking is off at this point. Now I have mine to where I can toggle that, and we'll talk about that when we get to customize buttons. But you can turn subject tracking on and off, and this comes into play, like I just mentioned, if you're in shooting a main autofocus method, let's say of a zone, one of the zones or something like that. You can shoot just a plain zone with no subject tracking or you can turn subject tracking on now within the zones. So it's pretty interesting. Subject to detect for birds, it's gonna be animals. Eye detect, in this case, is enabled, but I like the eyes. It's what we want to be in focus most of the time anyway, so that's set to enable right now and switching track subjects I have set to initial priority because if I've got the focus on the subject I want I don't want the camera to be looking to switch subjects on me if another bird's eye comes into the uh, frame if I'm on eye tracking or something like that moving on to autofocus number two menu this is interesting. This is a new thing that I'm working with right now. You've got the cases as usual, but you have auto down here. And it's blue because that's what I have it set to. I have it set to auto. Tracking automatically adapts to subject movement. It works, and it works really, really well when you're shooting birds in flight, then going to birds that are perched, then going to birds that are swimming. So it really adapts well. I've been messing with this. I like it so far. It works just as well as tweaking one of the cases. And if you tweak the cases, I mean, you know, going into tracking sensitivity or XLD cell tracking and moving them around. Normally, I would shoot this, which is case two modified with the tracking sensitivity all the way on negative and the XLD cell all the way on positive. But like I say, I've been trying the auto setting and it works really, really well. So give it a try maybe. See what you think. Autofocus 3 menu. One shot autofocus release priority. Not really a, a factor here, but it's on focus priority. That's this top one up here. 
if you go down to the preview autofocus, it is disabled. This right here, preview autofocus, is what was called continuous autofocus in the R5. So yeah, it, they changed the name, but it does the same thing. And I don't want it focusing all over the place. If I have, I, you know, I want to focus when I press half press, or in my case, most of the time, it's when I press a back button, right? So I use back button autofocus, so that's disabled. Lens drive, when autofocus impossible is on, you want it to cycle. If it misses, the autofocus to cycle when it, if it misses. Uh, autofocus assist beam firing is on. Limit autofocus areas, nope, don't have any limits in there. Autofocus area selection control is the multifunction button. That is if you have it brought up and active on your screen or in your viewfinder to be selecting your autofocus area. And then if you use the multifunction button, that little button right up by the, the, uh, the shutter button, it will scroll through for you. I actually have the multifunction button while I'm shooting to do something else, and that's to turn something on and off, like I just mentioned before. And we'll get to that, like I said before, when we get to the custom button settings. Okay, so moving down, orientation linked autofocus. And then we go on to manual focus peaking settings. If you're going to use manual focus, I don't have any of that stuff set. For birds and birds in flight, I hardly ever use manual focus. Focusing guide is thus off. Electronic full-time manual focus. I don't like the ring being active, the focusing ring being active on like my 600 F4 or my 100 to 500 when I'm shooting birds, birds in flight, when I'm using auto focus. It just tends to be in the way and I can move it accidentally and it can be counteracting my autofocus, stuff like that, so I turn that off. Lens electronic manual focus, it's off. Focus ring rotations, I don't mess with those. If we go on to the playback menu, I'm gonna kind of rifle through these because there's not a lot that needs to be done here until you get to here, the number five menu. Playback information display, you're in here, you can mess with that as much as you want. I've left them all checked. I don't really worry about it. But highlight alert is on, so you get the blinkies. Autofocus point display is on, so you know where the autofocus was uh, basically grabbing the bird when you review the images. Playback grid is off. All this other stuff doesn't really apply. I'm not going to go into any of the networking stuff, Bluetooth and all that. I disable all of that kind of stuff to keep my battery use down. I don't use G GPS. A lot of people like GPS. That's fine if you want to turn it on, but I don't use it. Okay, now we're into the setup menu. Record function and card and folder select and all that kind of stuff in here, you can see the main thing that's important to me is the record options for stills, and that's to auto switch card. For action photography, birds in flight, if a card fills up, I want it to switch to the other one. I don't want it to be duplicating images on two cards or anything like that. I can understand that if you're a wedding photographer or something like that, or if I'm shooting something that I absolutely don't want to lose an image if I have a card failure, but I've never had a card failure in the field ever. So I stick to auto switch card because that's more important for me not to miss action. Should go down here and I'm going to change these because the priority should be on one for each of those. I've been messing around with some things and it, it changed that. But those should be on one. That's the Compact Flash Express card. That's the fast card. And I want my buffer and everything to dump as fast as possible. I want things to read and write as fast as possible. So I want everything going to the Compact Flash Express card, auto switching to the secure digital card if it fills up. All right, we can move on to number two here. 
if you go to, now this is this is something different for the R3. So if you go down here, the only it says beep and it says enabled. But don't get this wrong. It's not the beeping when it autofocus necessarily. It it is that. It's a lot more than that. You go down to the volume and you can see the beep controls not just the focused beep, not just the touch sounds, not just the self timer, but it also controls that top thing that's highlighted right now, the shutter volume. That is for the electronic shutter. You can have it make a fake shutter noise when you're shooting the electronic shutter now. Unlike the R5, which I want them to add to the R5, it's here in the R3. And you can see I have it turned down to almost the zero setting for shutter volume, so it's very quiet, but I can hear it when I shoot. I love that. I've got focus beep all the way down. I've got touch sounds all the way down, so it's not beeping when it's focusing and all that kind of stuff. The self timer I leave up, because if I'm using a self timer, I'd like to beep. I'm not worried about it for birds though. So this is a great thing. But in order for this to work, in order for you, whoops, in order for you to have the fake shutter noise when you're shooting electronic shutter, beep must be enabled. So there you go. That's that's pretty important, but very cool. Very cool. Power savings, I'm not going to go into that. You can change how long things go before they time in and time out and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to worry too much about that. That's your specific uh, choice there. If we move on to screen viewfinder display, I have it set to auto 2. You can go inside there, there's an auto one, there's a two, there's a viewfinder only, there's a screen only. Uh, pick whichever you like there. Screen brightness, I don't really care about the screen brightness too much. I hardly ever use my LCD screen anymore because you can do everything through the viewfinder. Viewfinder brightness though is set to auto. Most of the time, I think I said, I don't like to use auto settings, but for the viewfinder, ever since the R5 was upgraded its firmware, uh, a few firmwares ago, upgrades ago, the auto became very, very good. The auto is as good on the R3 as it is on the R5 now. So I like the viewfinder brightness set to auto. It changes automatically and it keeps your exposure looking very, very accurate through the viewfinder if you have your exposure simulation on. I like auto here. If you go down to the tone color, color tone of the screen viewfinder, I don't care. I keep it at the default of two. The rest of this doesn't matter. Eye control. Now, for birds and birds in flight, I've been messing with eye control. It works. You calibrate it, the calibration's easy. You can calibrate it for your naked eyes, for if you wear glasses, if you wear contacts, or all three in different bins, in different setting bins. So you can do that. It calibrates in a couple minutes. It's really, really good. Now, for birds in flight, not really useful. For birds on the water, like ducks swimming around slowly or something, you might, you could use it, and I've used it, and it works. Eye control is off here. This is not something you're gonna be setting in the menu system. You're gonna have a button that controls that, and we'll talk about that. That's the set button. So if you hit the set button, it toggles eye control on and off, which is really nice. That's how I have it set up. Touch control, standard sensitivity, that's all that's about. Multifunction lock, shutter down. When you shut it down, that's nice. Keeps your sensor clean. The rest of this doesn't matter. Custom shooting modes. I've got some custom shooting modes set up uh, for birds, landscapes, astro, photography, stuff like that. But we won't go into that here. Save and load your camera settings on a card. I already did that. And that's nice to have. The rest of that doesn't really matter. Moving on to custom function menu. Exposure increments, one third, and ISO, same way, blah, blah, blah. Most of this stuff really apply. Same exposure for new aperture. If you're using a zoom lens like the 100 to 500, I have it set to ISO, just like on my R5. And go in there and you can see you can disable it or you can have it you know do a variety of both ISO and TV that's down here uh, or you can have it do shutter TV just shutter speed 
but I like it to change the ISO speed as I am zooming in and out. It's a variable, my 100 500 variable aperture lens. So the aperture is going to be changing as I'm zooming in and out. The camera is going to automatically adjust the ISO to keep my exposure the same. And I like that. Nothing going on through here. No changes. Let's move on to number three. Nothing going on here. Number four, custom buttons and dials. Lots going on here. Okay, so before we go into this, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to get myself a drink, and I'll be back shortly. Okay, custom buttons, we're back. I'm gonna go into custom buttons and there's a lot of setup here that you can change and this is how I've got mine set up. Shutter button, just metering start. I don't use half press for autofocus initiation. I use back button. So that shutter button half press is set just to start metering. Now, if we go down to the multifunction button, this is what I said I had switched it to, and I have switched it to start and stop tracking. So this is an interesting situation. If you're shooting one of the zone settings, you can now, I can cycle either just a plain zone. So all the little blue boxes will flicker around in the zone brackets and hopefully focus, be focusing on the bird that's in there. Or I can toggle the tracking on by hitting the multifunction button and now it will track the bird so and the bird's eye if you have eye detect on so that's neat having a little toggle there and i use the multifunction button for that if we go down to the <clears throat> next button this is the top button on the front of the camera there's two of them of course because you have a vertical built built-in grip here but the multifunction 2 button I have set to autofocus point selection. And that's because on the Canon R3, unlike the R5, these zones are flexible. You can change their size, their proportions. And, but in order to do that, you have to hit the autofocus point selection button first. And we'll, sh we'll see how that works in a minute. But on the back of my camera, I have the original autofocus point selection button set to something else. I have it set to an autofocus mode. So I had to remap that function, the autofocus point selection function, to a different button. And I, because I do want that capability of changing those zone sizes and proportions for autofocus, so I mapped the autofocus point selection button to the multifunction 2 button on the front of the camera. If we go down, the light is the light, the mode is the mode. Autofocus on button is eye detection autofocus. That's my eye detect. I can go to that instantly by pressing the autofocus on button. Your sensor on your autofocus on button, I have that turned to off. I don't want the autofocus points moving around when I move my thumb over the sensor. So the smart controller sensor on the autofocus on button is turned off for me the way I have it set up. Now if you go to the asterisk button, the AE lock button, you I have it set to if you're using eye control, you can move the autofocus points and it also starts the autofocus when you hit that button. So when I'm hitting that button, I can control the eye detect is on and I can or the eye control is on, I'm sorry. Things get kind of confusing now, the, all this eye stuff. Eye control, when the eye control is on, I can turn it off if I want by using the set button as a toggle. But when it's on and I'm holding down the asterisk button, the AE lock button, wherever I move the autofocus point with my eye, it also starts the autofocus at the same time. So it's much quicker than just putting a target out there and then having to do multiple things to, to uh, get tracking and then start autofocus. If you move down to my 
autofocus point selection button, I said I remapped it, and I did, to do something else, to register and recall a shooting function. This is set up just like in my R5. It's set up to go to spot autofocus, but there's some options in here now that weren't there before. So if we go in there, you can see that it's on registered recall shooting function. And if we go and hit the info button and go into the detail setup, here's where there's a little bit of a difference. Something's been added that you can add, and this is really, really great for birds. So if we go down, I've, I've unchecked all of these because when I hit my autofocus point select button, the very far right back button, this is what I want it to do. I want it to autofocus on an area that is point autofocus, and that's what it's set to. I want it to track the subject. I want it to track animals. Spot detection's there by default. Eye detection is on. Tracking sensitivity is like I would set up case two, like I had case two set up. Autofocus start position. This is interesting right here. This is something new. Manually select that. That's important here. Go. We'll just go back. Autofocus operation. We want it to autofocus, so that's on. So what this does is now you have tracking that can be overlaid onto spot autofocus. So if you have a situation where you have multiple birds, let's say a bunch of pelicans swimming around, bunch of heads, bunch of eyes, now I can put the spot autofocus point on what the head I want, hit the back button, the autofocus point select button, it's not only going to grab that bird's head, it's going to start tracking that bird's eye. So I can go from birds, from one individual bird's eye, to I can pick it by putting the spot, that little spot autofocus on whatever head I want, and then pressing the button. While I'm pressing the button, it's going to select that bird, it's going to select that bird's eye, and it's going to track that bird's eye. It's like having a gun sight out there now that's very accurate instead of using zone for example and it covers two or three heads of birds which birds head is it going to pick it can pick the one it wants they're all on the same focal plane close anyway who knows which one it's going to pick now you can go to spot autofocus put that on the bird like a gun sight pick the exact head you want when you're hitting that button, it's going to pick that bird, it's going to hit that bird's eye, and it's going to track that bird's eye or head or body. And you can move from bird to bird to bird, targeting just the bird you want. That is an amazing thing. I love it. So that's how I have my autofocus point selection button mapped. If we go down, the set button, like I said, is the eye control toggle. So if I press it once, it's on. If I press it again, it's off. We can, I can show you that. We'll go out. There it says, I control on, I control off, just like that. We can also go up, tracking on, tracking off. What I'm pressing there is the multifunction button right next to the, up above the um, shutter button. Like I said, I have that mapped to be tracking on, tracking off toggle. I said you can go ahead and change the size of these zones. Right now, I have my autofocus method set to flex. These are called flexible zones now for a reason, and they're numbered. You've got one, two, and three, and then you've got a new one, which is the entire frame. New from the R5, anyway. It doesn't have that. But the reason they're numbered is because just like your autofocus cases, you can set these and leave them to different proportions. So we're on flexible zone one right now. If I go ahead and press the multifunction two, the multifunction button two on the front of the camera, like I said, right here. Now, if I hit the rate button, which I just did, I can change the size and shape 
of the zone and I can leave it there and it will remember that. Flexible zone, autofocus one, maybe I want it to be that big instead of the original. To go back to the original, just hit info. It resets it back to the original. If you want to go back and change the size again, you just use your wheels. The main wheel right next to the shutter button and the thumb wheel in the back. And it shows you that. So this is really, really awesome. It's new. I love it. But you have to have that autofocus point select button available in order to get into this. So we hit set. And now we can get out. And any time now we go back, unless we set it back to the, the default, we go back in there, that flexible zone one is going to be that new shape that we set new pr proportions that we set. I love that. It's awesome. Very flexible. Like I said, if you can't make the autofocus set it up the way it'll work, that it'll work for you, then you may not be able to find a camera out there because the R3 now is giving you just about everything you could ever ask for. So going back into customize buttons, that's pretty much everything that we need to talk about here. We're not going to go in the video. Let's go back out, customize dials. Not a lot going on there. I just will mention that I use my control ring on either my adapter for my EF lenses or on my RF lenses as my autofocus uh, area selecting mechanism. I use the control ring. All right, moving on down the line here. There's a switch on this camera to switch between stills mode and video mode. You can do it that way. I wish you could do it a different way, but that's the only way you can do it. I have it set up differently on my R5. Given there's a dedicated switch on the R3, that's the only way you can do it. I have the smart controller on, but before, if you remember in the other menu, it was not on, it was disabled, but it, it's disabled for the autofocus part but it's on for other things. The cool thing is, is you can do this, which is really neat. Let's give it a try here. Let's play. We move on down the line here. None of these are really important. You can set them as you want. Not important for birds and birds in flight specifically, that is. If we come down the line here, retract, not much going on there. Nothing really going on there. The only other thing left is the My Menu. I have one of them set up, and it, the only thing it has on it is Format Card. Because when I want to format a card, I don't want to be digging through the menus. I just go to my My Menu 1 and format my card from there. From here, I'm going to close down the menu system, go back, and we'll uh, finish this up. All right. So that's a trip through the menus on my R3, set up principally for birds, birds in flight, action, wildlife, stuff like that. I hope you found it at least a little bit informative. If you did, I would love it if you would subscribe. I always like getting new subscribers to my channel. So until next time, please be safe. I hope you have great light, take great images, and I'll see you soon.